for the millions of hopeful green card applicants stuck in the immigration system backlog, time is of the essence. Many have been waiting for their turn for years to no avail. The Biden administration promised to change that, but with the end of the 2021 fiscal year, the overwhelming sentiment is one of disappointment. I'm Andre Major, immigration attorney and an immigrant myself. And in today's video, we'll be talking about how the Biden administration let over 200,000 green cards go to waste this year and how that impacts all current and potential green card applicants, including diversity lottery visa winners. We'll be discussing green card quotas, the slowing immigrant visa processing due to the pandemic and the ensuing green card backlog as well as the resumption of the green card lottery. If you started your immigration journey or are thinking of doing so, keep watching to learn all the facts about the backlog in green card processing and what the way forward looks like. Green card quotas. To begin, it's necessary to talk about visa caps. The US government can issue a total of 675,000 green cards every year, but these green cards don't go to just anyone or everyone. U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, as well as the Homeland Security Agency that oversees requests for visas and other immigration benefits, reserves visas for certain categories. We have the family preference immigrants that are sponsored by U.S. citizens and lawful permanent residents who want to bring their families to the States. Employment-based immigrants based on H-1B visas or student visas or just plain employment-based green card holders that allow U.S. employers to hire foreign workers in specialty occupations or for more permanent positions. And lastly, we have diversity visa lottery winners who diversify the pool of immigrants in the United States. And we'll talk more about them in the second half of today's video. It's a holistic group. Now, these categories don't each get the same share in the 665,000 green card pie. 480,000 visas are reserved for family preference immigrants. 140,000 for employment-based, and 55,000 for diversity visa lottery winners. The U.S. caps the number of both family-based visas and employment-based visas every fiscal year, which runs from October 1st to September 30th in the U.S. Unused visas. You might be thinking, what happens if the reserved visas for a certain category aren't used? Do they just expire? Well, yes and no. Diversity visas and employment-based visas that aren't used in a fiscal year become invalid. However, unused family-based visas from one fiscal year carry over and they're basically added to the cap for employment-based visas for the next fiscal year. This helps increase employment-based opportunities and is generally very good for the economy. So if 10,000 family-based visas were unused in 2020, they'd be added to the already reserved 140,000 employment-based visas to make a total of 150,000 employment-based visas in 2021. Make sense? Good. Because this is exactly what happened in 2020. Due to the pandemic and Trump's immigration ban that primarily affected family preference and diversity immigrants, 122,000 family preference visas went unused and were added to the 2020 unemployment-based visas, which raised the total to 262,000 visas. This was a blessing for employment-based green card applicants, but let's put this into context. The U.S. has a 7% per country cap on immigrants under current immigration law. This means that the number of immigrants from any one country cannot be greater than 7% of the total number of immigrants who come to the United States in a single given year. So if 100 immigrants are coming to the U.S. in a year, no more than seven of them, for example, Chinese or Filipino, or Indian or Mexican. No more than seven from any individual country. You can probably see how this would be problematic. The US gets many more visa applications from countries like Mexico, China, India, and the Philippines for family preference immigration than for employment-based visas than would, for example, Norway or Denmark. And yet, because of the per country cap, immigrants from Mexico and India will be stuck for many years, decades even, 
waiting for their turn to become green card holders, while visas may be may remain unused and go to waste every year. As of 2020, there were more than 9 million green card applicants stuck in the backlog, about 7.5 million on the family-based side and 1.6 million on the employment-based side. And this number is just bound to increase in the coming years. The expiration of the family-based visas in 2020 and the subsequent increase in employment-based visas in 2021 gave green card applicants and U.S. immigration authorities a rare opportunity. Many people, most of them from China and India, on H-1B visas were waiting in line for the green card application to get processed. With the 262,000 employment-based visa cap, more of these people now had a chance to become lawful permanent residents. And with the Biden administration assuming power, people had hoped that things would change for the better. Unfortunately, that's not what happened. 200,000 green cards wasted. By the time the 2021 fiscal year ended at the end of September, an estimated 200,000 of the 60, 675,000 available visas had expired. According to the State Department, USCIS failed to issue around 150,000 family-based visas and 80,000 employment-based visas. On top of that, 40,000 diversity visas were also lost. To make matters worse, the U.S. hit the lowest number of resettled refugees in the history of the program. Only a meager 11,411 refugees which is about 50,000 less than the 62,500 cap. So there was a sharp decrease in legal immigration on all fronts, which will have a ripple effect on many people in the immigration pipeline. This makes for a very bleak picture of shrinking immigration opportunities. There are millions of undocumented immigrants in the US who have limited opportunities to become a naturalized permanent resident. And yet we now see that even legal channels for immigration are becoming unfeasible. The severe backlog in visa and green card processing traps many green card applicants in limbo. And every year that visas are wasted are years that families are separated and that employees spend in, in uncertainty with the threat of deportation over their heads. The approximate 120,000 employment-based and diversity visas that expired this year represent 120,000 people who will have to put their dreams on hold because of the federal bureaucracy and red tape. As for the 150,000 unused family preference visas this year, they have been added to the fiscal year 2022 cap on employment-based visas, which brings the total to 290,000 for, for this coming year, even higher than last year. Now, why did this happen? Good question. Now that we've covered what happened, let's discuss how it happened in the first place. Why were U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services unable to process all these applications in time? first in 2020 and again in 2021, leading to 200,000 wasted green cards. Why did USCIS let the opportunity to make a dent in the backlog of employment-based visa applicants go? The main culprit is obviously the COVID-19 pandemic, which slowed pro processing both the State Department, where some consulates remained closed, and the Department of Homeland Security. Additionally, visa processing was temporarily halted when the U.S. embassies and consulates abroad closed in the wake of the pandemic and suspended visa services. This had far-reaching consequences when combined with President Trump's COVID-19 immigration ban, which was meant to preserve employment opportunities for Americans negatively impacted by the pandemic's economic downturn. This ban was lifted by President Biden, but the damage had been done. Family-based immigration was limited in favor of employment-based migration. President Trump's ban affected family preference and diversity visa applicants the most as data from the Department of Homeland Security shows. 94% of non-citizens who obtained a green card through family ties did so from abroad, while 80% of those who applied for green cards through the employment-based categories did so from within the U.S. Since the ban was limited to visa issuance to people outside the country, family preference immigrants suffered the most, leading to 122,000 family preference visas going unused in 2020. But what happened in 2021? Well, for one, a series of Trump administration policies, including additional interview and biometrics requirements, slowed down visa processing, affecting green card and work visa applicants alike. But more importantly, budget restrictions and mismanagement at USCIS made it difficult to process visa applications in time. USCIS is primarily funded by immigration application fees. And with the shutdown of certain in-person services at the agency, 
during the pandemic and other mismanagement related to recent vetting and fraud detection policies, the agency found itself in financial trouble. USCIS implemented a hiring freeze and threatened to furlough 13,000 employees, nearly two thirds of its staff. The agency had told Congress in May of this year that it would need $1.2 billion to be able to maintain its regular operations. Thankfully, the agency's financial situation last year has considerably improved since then, and it canceled its planned furloughs. But you can see how this crisis would have disrupted migration procedures and led to the eventual wastage of 200,000 green cards. The worst part is none of these systemic issues that led to the situation in the first place have been addressed. And with the unused family preference visas being added to the employment-based green cards cap, no one is confident that such a situation and delaying visa processing will not reoccur. Immigration reform in Congress. <laughs> it's almost funny. It shouldn't be. It's actually sad. Uh, but it's, immigration reform has become kind of like a joke, huh? Federal government's repeated failures to meet the annual caps on immigrant visas is worsening the backlog of green card applications. But one of the biggest reasons behind this clogged up immigration system is that much needed immigration reform is not moving through Congress. The Senate parliamentarian keeps rejecting the Democratic immigration proposals through reconciliation. Senate parliamentarian Elizabeth McDonough has so far shot down two attempts by the Democrats to include provisions legalizing undocumented immigrants in the reconciliation bill. And yet the fight continues. The House Judiciary Committee included legislative pro provisions to recapture unused green cards from the past three decades in an extensive budget reconciliation package. This would save unused visas from one fiscal year and allow them to be used in the next fiscal year instead of being permanently lost. If passed, these provisions in the budget reconciliation bill would improve prospects for prospective green card applicants and the ones currently in the pipeline. And considering the 200,000 visas that just expired in 2021 fiscal year, it would dramatically increase the number of visas available in 2022. But without congressional action, the employment-based visas will remain lost. This process of visa recapture is not new to lawmakers. In 2005, Congress recaptured 50,000 lost visas from 2001 to 2004 to benefit primarily nurses and physical therapists with the Real ID Act. Therefore, there is precedent for such a reform. These 200,000 expired visas and green cards from 2021, as well as expired visas from the years before, are already congressionally authorized. Immigrants shouldn't have to suffer because of delayed processing on the administration's part and the red tape around the legal immigration process. It should come as no surprise that the House Judiciary Committee's budget reconciliation package has received support from immigration advocates, but the support from other key immigration players is less than enthusiastic. Senate Foreign Relations Committee Chairman Senator Bob Menendez, one of the key players, has admitted that visa recapture is not a priority for him, especially considering that the reconciliation bill isn't adequately addressing the millions of undocumented immigrants in the country. Senator Bob Dem Menendez, Democrat of New Jersey, told reporters that, quote, we're not going to take care of business and not take care of the 11 million undocumented immigrants in some way. He let it clarified to Bloomberg government that if we're talking about recapturing the visas for family backlogs, I would certainly consider that. If we're talking about getting visas so we can take care of business problems, I'm not supportive in the absence of getting anything else done. So what does the way forward look like? Well, according to Shev Dalal Daini, Government Relations Director at the American Immigration Lawyers Association, of which I'm a part of, says it will be nearly impossible for USCIS to process that many green card applications without hiring more staff and further streamlining procedures. He said that, quote, unless Congress acts now and not only recaptures those visas that are lost, but fixes the statute to ensure that they don't go lost in the future, that they're preserved going forward, we're going to be right back in the same situation next year. Let's go to diversity lottery visas. Here's another group of immigrants who are suffering due to UCIS visa processing delays, the diversity visa immigrants. In recent years, hope is dimming for applicants of the diversity immigration visa. The diversity immigration visa or diversity visa, DV, is a lottery method green card grant hosted by the Department of State in the US. It serves as a unique opportunity for millions around the world to gain a permanent resident card to experience opportunities available in the United States. The diversity visa was lobbied and passed as part of the Immigration Act of 1990. 
primarily targeting the lack of diversity in immigration populations coming to the U.S. Most of the immigrant influx before the diversity visa was from Mexico, China, and India, and other areas experienced underrepresentation. To combat this imbalance, the green card lottery was established. Occurring on an annual basis, 55,000 applicants are selected from all over the world to gain a green card to live in the United States. This move provided important benefits that were not just limited to diversity. Greater diversity in the immigration population encourages competition in the U.S. job market and lifted wages. However, that promising venture of diversity visa has seen dark times in recent years. During the Trump administration, consequential decisions were made regarding immigration laws, particularly ones that diminished the incomes of immigrants. In order to disallow or prevent the movement of people from Muslim-majority countries into the United States, also known as the Muslim ban, significantly affected the situation of hopeful applicants, turning them away. The COVID-19 pandemic had its own turbulent influence on the social and economic situation in the U.S., and immigration services were no exception. With embassies temporarily shut down or operating with fractured manpower, backlocking became a glaring issue in the processing of all immigration services. Another blow to the fragile situation expected green card applicants were in President Trump's decision to halt visa grants. This order prevented, prevailed until President Biden took over, and although he reversed many Trump area policies that hindered the immigration process, diversity visa applicants were neglected. In mid-2021, a few months before the 2020 fiscal year ended, President Biden ordered other immigration services to take precedence over diversity visas, effectively placing them on the lowest priority. The reason diversity visa applicants who were chosen and essentially welcomed to possess the United States Green Card are low spirited is due to timing. The fiscal year ends on September 30th, which is to say a couple weeks ago, and the processing of immigration applicants for the previous year, 2020, ceases. A few weeks before the deadline, some diversity visa applicants raised concerns over the slow processing speed and backlogging in their green card procedure. It was abundantly clear that this was not an isolated case, as barely 13,200 diversity visas had been issued out of the 55,000 total quota. Applicants had submitted all their documentation on time, remained updated on progress reports by the Immigration Services, yet months later were not provided the interviews that is considered the final step in a diversity visa grant. Considering the diverse range of people from different countries, it's no wonder they expressed frustration for the wait and the possibility of losing their lottery opportunity. Many applicants belonged to areas where U.S. embassies had not been established and had to travel long distances with faith that they would be able to complete the diversity visa applications and obtain their green card. For more than 40,000 applicants as of late, they were unable to fulfill their dream as the fiscal year ended. In fact, registration of diversity immigration visa for 2023 has opened, President Biden announced, and it seems the government is moving on. Diversity visas allotted for a year do not trickle into the next one if they remain undistributed, dimming the spirits of all applicants who were provided this life-changing opportunity. The selected applicants of 2020 are not giving up, though, and are turning to legal action in search of justice. The motivations and stakes for many diversity visa applicants are much higher than one would expect. For many, it is a unique opportunity to participate in the U.S. economy and receive fair compensation. For others, the element of choice has diminished. The State Department did not consider the fact that a great portion of selected applicants belong to areas where they experience unbelievable life circumstances or state control that they need to escape. It seems heartless, as the attorneys representing the plaintiffs who are pursuing legal action would agree, to create this foundation of hope for such people only to take it away. Good luck v. Biden is the most prominent immigration lawsuit regarding the diversity visa of 2020. The plaintiffs compromised efforts of 24,000 selected applicants who are challenging the State Department's actions, particularly the Division IV, or lowest prioritization of diversity visa processing. They are seeking redressal for the delayed processing of their applications and opening the floor to the possibility of preserving the allotted diversity visas of 2020 beyond the fiscal year's end. On September 20th, with the window of opportunity rapidly closing, the U.S. District Court had a hearing of, on Good Luck v. Biden and ruled that 6,914 diversity visas would be reserved until the matter is fully adjudicated and closed. This decision reestablishes faith for the selected applicants as they had a fighting chance, but the number of reserved diversity visas is still small, and unless it is increased, many plaintiffs will lose their chance at a green card. As of October 14th, no further notice has been issued by the Columbia District Court or the State Department, and the limbo continues. The fates of thousands of hopeful individuals from all over the world 
who wish to come to the United States remains in question. That wraps up our video for today. If this was of value to you, please consider liking and sharing with people who may find it helpful. Also, drop any immigration-related questions you have in the comments below. We'll do our best to provide an answer to you. You can call us today if you want to discuss your case or need help on your green card or immigration journey, and we can find the best options in your case. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay healthy and be safe.